You know, do you ever have a, you know, do you ever see somebody with a bigger brother? You know how they, you know, the smaller one will go out and entice other people? Yo, jerk. You know, something bad to somebody. And the dude will come over and say, what you doing, man? Hey, you want to mess with me? You mess with my brother. See, that's how Jesus is with us. Not that you're going to go out and entice somebody. Are you listening? It's the demons and so forth. Because Jesus is going to let your butt get kicked if you do something stupid. <laughs> and he'll wait for you to say, forgive me. <laughs> you have to repent and then he'll come and rescue you and heal you. But who wants to go through all that suffering? <laughs> Jeremiah 42. Is it hot in here or what? Y'all hot? <laughs> Jeremiah 42, verse 5. Whew. I think I got everybody's drink. Hold on a second. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> In verse 5, I think I said, yes. So they said to Jeremiah, Let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you, whether it is pleasing or displeasing, we will what? Obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. See, see, they were going to obey the voice no matter whether it was pleasing or displeasing. And that's where you and I got to be. See, as you ask him to cause you to be disciplined, he's going to lead you to the place where change is going to come. In this area of change, you're going to, because you want to please him now more and more, you're going to want to be obedient no matter what. It doesn't matter. Why? Because you just got revelation that by being disciplined got you to one place. If being disciplined got you to one place, guess what? Being disciplined is going to get you to another. Amen? Go to Deuteronomy. No, don't go to Deuteronomy. Go to Ezekiel. I love Ezekiel. 36. Ezekiel 36. Cause me, Lord. Cause me to be disciplined. Ezekiel 36, is everybody there? And verse 23. Ezekiel 36, 23. Would you read it with me? And I will sanctify my great name, which has been what? Profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am what? Hallowed in you before their eyes. Ah. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put what? my spirit within you and what cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them so now you have the holy spirit that is causing you to be disciplined are you listening but you must ask lord cause me now watch this because you were disciplined right he brought you to a place of change and now that place of change is bringing you to a place of obedience. Then he says this. Then you will dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all of your uncleanliness and I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. That's called prosperity, isn't it? That's called blessing. Amen? That's called what? Blessing. Praise God. 
Go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy. De De Deuteronomy. You know, if there's a blessing, there's a what also? A curse. So blessing comes through obedience and curse comes through disobedience. And guess who wants to curse you? Satan's kingdom. That's why they want you to sow in the flesh. Then you become a flesh creature. Deuteronomy 28 in verse 1. Is everybody there? Deuteronomy 28. Would you read it with me? Now it shall come to pass, if you did diligently what? Obey the voice of the Lord your God. Obey what? The voice. How many of you know God can speak? Good. Obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all of his commandments. Hello. Which I command you today. So he wants us not only to obey what is written, but he wants us to obey what is spoken. That the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. That's blessing, isn't it? And all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. How many of y'all want to be overtaken by a blessing? Well, you got to start with discipline. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed you shall be in the city, and blessed you shall be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and, pro, and the, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your er, herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Come on now. These are the blessings of God. You have to be disciplined to get to that place. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. I love it. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Now, walking in his ways means discipline. Amen? Keeping his commands is obey, obedience. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Is that leaving a memorial? Yeah. Yeah. What are you leaving behind? What legacy? One bringing glory to God or one bringing glory to the devil? And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock. And I'm not telling you to go out and buy cattle. Or goats or whatever, you know. I'm just, that was then, amen. Not that if you don't have cattle, they can't increase, you know. And in the produce of your ground, the Lord, which, uh, the, and in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you, the Lord will open to you his good treasures of heaven. Ooh, that's revelation. To give the rain to your land in this season and bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend it to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Praise God. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you today, and are careful to observe him, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord God to observe carefully all of his commandments and his statutes which I command you today that these curses will come upon you and overtake you.